Hi everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about an important topic, SRE burnout. First things first, just some introduction. I'm Ludo and this is Peanut. And here on the screen are some things that I enjoy in life. If you recognize any of them or curious what they mean, you can find me after the talk. I'm Swiss and French, moved to Edinburgh 11 years ago, where I started working as a software engineer at General Electric and NatWest. I'm now VP of Operations at Cloudsoft. We are a software company and AWS consulting partner. Our software Cloudsoft AMP is an automation platform for SREs, which can help with auto remediation, resilience, and automating repetitive tasks. And because of the experience with our own system and software development processes, but also the customers we are talking to and working with every day, I'd like to share some insights on what I've learned from my experience into keeping engineers motivated, but also how to prevent burnout. So let's face it, it is part of the life of an SRE that incidents will happen. And incidents resolution is by its nature very stressful. Working against the clock to find out what's wrong and how to resolve it knowing that every second of downtime is costing a business hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. In fact, the Uptime Institute's most recent survey found that a full 25% of incidents in 2022 cost in excess of $1 million each. The same survey found that nearly half of incidents are down to human error. Things like a misconfiguration of system, failure to follow standards, operating procedures, or a lack of understanding of new technologies. Which means that incident stress can sometimes come with the worry of, what if it was my fault? Should I say anything? Am I going to get into trouble? And obviously, incidents never happen at a convenient time either. If you're on call, you know the feeling of having to drop everything and jump in to get things sorted. And because of the system we build and operate are increasingly complex, incidents are lasting longer with more people involved and making it harder to find root cause easily. Again, the Uptime Institute found that 30% of outages lasted more than 24 hours. But responding to outages and learning from them is bread and butter to SREs. And the stress of incident is simply part of the job. But there is a difference between the in-moment stress and the long-lasting burnout. Moving on from those statistics, let's get back to the topic of today's talk. The definition of burnout says that this is a state of exhaustion caused by prolonged stress and overwork. This is very different to the in-moment stress that I mentioned earlier. Whilst incident management is a source of stress, and if incidents are happening a lot, this can contribute to burnout. I think the challenge for SREs is balancing immediate needs of incident resolutions with the medium and long-term strategic automation goals, ultimately to improve overall system reliability. And one of the things that's getting in the way is toil. So what is the real issue that leads to burnout? Burnout happens when the balance tips away from meaningful work towards too much toil, which in itself leads to more toil. Toil is manual, repetitive, and low-value work, which eats into the time SREs should be spending on learning and making improvements. A recent survey found that nearly two-thirds of respondents said they were too much toil with insufficient automation in maintenance tasks. Let's take a look of the definition of toil in the SRE context, according to Google, that is also present in the SRE Bible, I'm sure some of you have on their bookshelf. Toil is the kind of work tied to running a production service that tends to be manual, repetitive, automatable, tactical, devoid of injuring value, and that scales linearly as the service grows. So that characterizes well with what we've noticed in the real world. In short, toil is a huge waste of talent, time, and money. Engineers like to solve challenging problems, flex their skills, and make your system more reliable and more performant. 
But if they are overburned with toil, they either won't have time to do it or will head towards burnout whilst they juggle both priorities. And stressed out people make mistakes, which other people have to fix. We are into that infinite loop of hell. Let's pause now for a second and get your thoughts. What do you think, what are the sources of toil to you? I'll give you 30 seconds and I'll get back to you to some of your answers. Okay, so some answers I would have expected. So some of you said copying and pasting comments from a playbook, manual response to repeated incidents, um, repeated task, configuration changes, large environments, a lot of manual tasks. So that all goes uh, with the with what an SRE is doing that can be considered as toil. So those examples can how, how do they contribute to bur burnout? Um, there's three main things in here. First thing is technology ecosystem we use to build and operate those services and products is getting more and more complex and interdependent. Cloud, on-premise, developer platforms, homegrown code, third-party tools, open source libraries, SaaS products, and now artificial intelligence. The landscape is getting bigger and more complex. And that brings fragility and failures. This increases both the likelihood of issues and the difficulty of quickly resolving those. This growing complexity has resulted in increased demand for SRE skills. And the subsequent talent shortfalls means that more and more work is being piled on SRE teams. This operational overload means that SREs are spending more and more of their time on high stress incident management and less time on strategic automation initiatives, which are designed to reduce the likelihood and severity of incidents. And thirdly, as we previously discussed, this lack of strategic automation is also what's stopping SREs from reducing their toil burden. The Catchpoint survey mentioned earlier also found that 50% of respondents thought insufficient automation of maintenance tasks was one of the main sources of this toil. Now we really link toil to burnout. All those stressing factors massively affect your cognitive load. Cognitive load relates to the amount of usable information your memory can hold at any one time. What counts as too much differs between people, but when working memory is overloaded, content is hard to understand, learning becomes slow or ineffective, and transferring knowledge into long-term memory becomes more difficult. Basically, it's really hard to do well if you're suffering from too much cognitive load. This is a term which has had quite a surge in popularity recently, particularly due to the discussions around platform engineering as a way to help developers deal with this cognitive load. But cognitive load applies to those running and supporting services, not just those building them. SREs certainly have a lot of knowledge to learn and maintain, and especially as they are required to switch contexts frequently. So how can you notice your own burnout or people around you struggling? Burnout has a huge impact on your mental and physical health. You might experience changes in your mood and don't feel like getting up in the morning. But because of this health impact, you may notice in your team an increase in sick days or lack of engagement from burned out staff. And people who are dissatisfied with their jobs will look elsewhere. Software engineers and SREs in particular are likely to be motivated by meaningful and interesting work. And if you have not getting that stimulation, then you could find yourself with a high style of turnover. And all of this combines to a lack of innovation and progress. Now let's move on to some of the ways we can help our SREs to avoid getting burned out in the first place and free them up to deliver the automation and service improvements that will actually make things better. Fundamentally, SREs need ways to help them deal with tech complexity. Doing so will also address cognitive load as this is what's at the root of their problems. I'm going to talk through a couple of practices SRE teams can adopt and show the value of these practices through some real world examples. 
and those will helpfully alleviate cognitive load. First of this practice is to embrace composable blueprints and models, which provide a standardized approach to consuming infrastructure and the services you build on top of that. SREs can embed reliability best practices into these. And if incidents occur, they can easily push updates to the consumers of the services to ensure the entire tech ecosystem has the latest reliability updates, which means fewer incidents and more time to create more blueprints and more models. Let's take a look at this in practice. This is a real case study, but we have to keep it anonymous for today. The SRE team of a video streaming platform is globally distributed and operates a complex technology stack supporting services, which must be available at all times to meet regulatory requirements. Because of the complexity, criticality, and sensitivity of the services, the team supports new hires undergo a rigorous three to six months training process. This represents a significant time investment for existing team members, slows the team down, and means also fewer hands are available to fight fires when needed. The organization is also looking to grow significantly in the immediate future and needs to be able to do so efficiently. The skill set required to operate the environment means that if they were to scale the current tech operating model, they would have to hire hundreds of new engineers. Instead, they are taking a new approach. They are encoding the operational skill set required to operate the environment into composable blueprints, which will drastically shorten the onboarding cycle. They are also using automation around these blueprints and models to orchestrate their services to improve uptime and service reliability. Which brings us to our next practice, auto-remediation. Auto-remediation is about sensing issues and automatically fixing them, saving you time and money, and reducing the impact of inevitable failures. And it builds on the blueprints and models we just discussed before. Successful auto-remediation requires connecting, monitoring, and alerting tools with blueprints of what a service should look like. You then add policies to come into action should the service drift or not meet its defined service level objective all of course held together by automation. You can describe your remediation policy and automatically run it as many times or as often as it needs without human intervention. All you need to do is configure the policy ahead. Looking to put this into practice, a global bank that using auto-remediation to improve recovery time and innovate safely in a heavily regulated environment. Like the previous example, the team is globally distributed and operating a really complex technology stack with some stringent legal requirements around uptime and service availability. They're also in a competitive environment, meaning the developers need to be able to move quickly while still providing high levels of reliability and resilience. And as you can see, the results are pretty staggering. But burnout isn't just a technical problem and can't just be solved with technical solutions. The way in which teams work together um, and are managed also plays a huge part in addressing burnout before it becomes a problem. We're going to look into a couple of issues that SRE teams tend to face working together and some of the ways to address them. One of the fundamental of SRE is the blameless incident postmortem. When incidents occur, it's important to bring the team together, take a deeper look at an incident, and figure out what happened, why it happened, and how the team responded, and what can be done to prevent repeat incidents and improve future response. When things go wrong, it's a natural human tendency to look for someone to blame, and in teams where blame is the game, this can create a culture of fear, which actually prevents team from doing their best work. Psychological safety is hugely important to well-functioning teams. People need to know that they won't be punished or humiliated for speaking up with ideas, questions, concerns, or mistakes. In a blameless postmortem, it's assumed that every team and employee acted with the best intentions, 
based on the information they had at the time. Instead of in the identifying and punishing whoever messed up, blameless postmortem focus on improving performance moving forward. Engineers are problem solvers at heart, and when an incident comes in, they likely aren't thinking about policies and handbooks, they are thinking about fixing the problem. And this is understandable, but it can place a huge amount of pressure on your highest performers. They might have great problem solving skills, deep technical knowledge, or never seem to switch off. And as a result, they consistently step in to save the day and become the go-to people whenever an incident happens. But this hero status can actually cause more problems for your SRE teams. It doesn't scale. Our other members of the team give the opportunity to deepen their own knowledge and grow their skills. If they take it upon themselves to fix everything, how can you ensure that the correct procedures being followed, incidents properly analyzed, and learnings shared? Heroes will burn out quickly. And because teams have become dependent on them, they leave a huge hole, ultimately impacting your ability to operate reliable services. So instead, teams should always conduct thorough, blameless postmortems, focus on learning and prevention rather than quick fixes. Make sure that knowledge is distributed. Maybe those blueprints and models we talked about earlier could help. You should also consider broader workplace culture and working policies too. Being happy at work means that it's easier to manage some of the inevitable stresses and strains. I'm really proud to say that 100% of our team think that we're a great place to work. And here are some of the reasons why. We offer flexibility remote first, but have office space for those who want it. Sharing the support rota, talking into consideration people's personal calendars, giving back time if an outage happens out of hours. Opportunity for skills development. Social events outside work, like the last year we climbed Ben Nevis together. At least I believe it's Ben Nevis. As you can see, it was quite foggy. And giving back days so the team can give their time back to local char charities. So to summarize, with the speed of change, incidents increase. It might not be that bad as it creates a need for SREs and highlight the importance of their role. But it's also critical they are being given the opportunity to do the job properly and invest in automation so that they don't become burned out. There are technical and non-technical solutions to address burnout. As tech people, we may be more tempted to reach for the tech solutions first, but if, they are, if the underlying causes aren't addressed too, technology won't solve everything. We need to balance tech with culture. And that concludes my talk for today. Thanks, and I'm now happy to take any questions.